Well, this is my new Monarch, new to me, Monarch 10EE. And I just finished installing uh, Chinese scales on it. This is uh, on the cross slide, and I installed uh, another longer scale in the z-axis. And uh, the installation uh, went okay. It's a lot of work, got it all done. I have a YH Sino DRO, and the scales are from Eason, and they're one tenth uh, resolution scales. So the DRO can be set to different resolution scales, and it accommodates one tenth inch scales just fine. However, there's a problem. The problem is that the readout is erratic. I'm moving the X, the, the cross slide now, and you can see nothing's happening there. And let's see how we do. Okay, I'm moving the Z, and the Z is counting properly. Uh, but okay, now the Z is not counting. So I have some issue going on. And okay, now the X is counting properly. You wonder what's happening here. Well, this uh, YH Sino DRO has a nice feature to it. There's a mode, a test mode, which is sort of like an oscilloscope. And the yellow and the blue line represent the two phases of the DRO. You can select the axis that you want to look at, and you can select the the time scale. So I'll make it higher time and let's see so when the two square waves are working like that the display is probably working all right i will flip back to normal mode and you can see x is working properly let's see y and y is working properly now it's not working properly let's see and x is not working properly so let's go back to oscilloscope mode and you can see the yellow line is producing a square wave, but nothing on the blue line. And unless you get square waves on both lines, both signals from the, um, the two phases, if you don't get the both, the DRO won't work. So there's, there's something going on where the DRO is not seeing both phases. The wires are screwed in well. I jiggle the cables and that does not fix it. And I jiggle the cable at the scale itself and that does not fix it. So something funny is happening here and it's erratic. Sometimes it works properly and sometimes it doesn't. So I'm gonna to try to chase down what's going on here. I've looked at the scales mechanically. The mounting is good. The measurements between the scale and the reed head, that's all been double checked. That's good. Something happening here that's not right. And I'm going to dive into it. Uh, so we're gonna to try to debug it. I have this uh, little board with a DB connectors on it. I'm going to put that in line with the encoders and I can clip probes and things like that on this here. So we'll give that a try. Okay, we're going to go over what we're looking at. This is the connector from the Z-axis on the lathe. It's a nine pin connector called the DB9. And this is, this is how it's wired. This is what the connector looks like. There's the pin numbers, one through nine. And this is what the pins mean. Pin two is ground, and then pin six will be one of the phases called phase A. Yellow is just the wire in the connector. That doesn't really matter. Pin seven should be five volts. The five volts will come from the DRO, and then pin eight is the B phase that should be that's the other square wave and R is an index pulse and that doesn't really concern us here. So we're going to connect in this little breakout board. I'm going to put that in and I'm going to first measure the voltages this 5 volts on these screw terminals here and hopefully that's good. If the 5 volts is off probably nothing's going to work. So let's give that a try. 
So what I'm seeing here is I'm moving the Z axis. This is what I have connected to the adapter now. And I can see the yellow trace is putting out uh, what looks like good square waves, but nothing on the blue trace. So I look down at my oscilloscope and I've made it so the yellow and the blue are the same by just swapping the probes. And I see the yellow trace producing a good square wave and the blue trace not producing anything. But there's something wrong with this in that the uh, there's a lot of ringing on the signal. If you see the the expanded section, see the square wave looks good except for this burst of stuff, which I don't know what it is. And that could be the heart of the problem. So I will chase it down. Could be something to do with my setup where I have the wires clipped in, or it could be uh, some odd signal breaking in that I don't know the source of right now. Okay, here we are. I'm just testing the encoder alone and it is not connected to the DRO. I only have the power pins from the uh, DRO connected to the scale, but not the signal pins. It is pin two and pin seven is connected to my pin two and pin seven are connected through my adapter board, through this jumper cable, through the DRO cable over here. When I move things, the scale looks just fine. The next step is to connect the signal pins from the scale to the DRO individually, and we'll see if that works okay. So I will connect the A signal, which is on pin six, and I will put the DRO in oscilloscope mode, and you can see, well, that works just fine. So the DRO is seeing the digital signal okay on one channel and looks okay on the scope. There's no none of that noise, that high frequency signal on top of the normal digital signal. So I will try connecting the next signal, which is channel B, is pin 8 on the connectors. Okay, channel B is connected and the Signal still looks okay, and the digital signal on the display looks okay. I'll zoom in a bit here, and you can see the blue and the yellow signal. They both look good, and on the scope it continues to look good. So far, so good. It seems that the digital signals are not the source of our problem. Since that seems to be the case, there are ground lines that are not connected. The, the uh, shell of the, the DB25 is soldered to the ground pin and uh, in the scale, and that is not connected. So we can give that a try and see if that causes the problem. For that, I'm just going to use a clip lead on the shell, and that seems to be okay. So I have connected all of the signal and the ground lines together and we're still not seeing that problem. So we'll try putting it together normally and we'll see if the problem comes back. And when I connect it up, the problem is back. So what can this be? It's possible there's a, a signal that is not shown in the drawing that is connected that is causing the problem. I'll have to take the connector apart and have a look. Right now I don't know. The problem is this this fat line here. This is a, a high frequency oscillation. It's too fast to see on the scope at the moment, but that should not be there. And that is the origin of the mess up. I am going to take the connector apart here just to see if there's some wires that are connected that not in the standard specification. There should only be 
A, B, and R, and ground, and, and 5 volts. And we'll see if there's maybe something more connected. This is pin 1, not connected. Pin 2, that is a, that's the 5 volts. Oh no, pin 2 is the ground. 3 is not connected. 4, oh dear. Let's see. This is the standard pinout for Chinese scales. And it shows four. There's a wire on number four. And I don't know what that is. Am I counting correctly? Let's see. One. Pin one. Pin two. Pin three. Pin four has what looks like a orange wire on. And then pin five is not connected. There's a ground soldered to the to the shell. Well, that's okay. And on this side, this will be pin 6. There's a brown wire. Pin 6 is uh, signal A, channel A. Pin 7, this is 5 volts. It's a green wire. Pin 8 is channel B. And pin 9 is the R signal. So, there's a mystery here. Pin 4 has a wire that goes into the scale that I don't know what it is. And it seems like if I have it connected, things mess up. So I don't know. I have looked inside the DRO, and there's six wires that go from the DB9 connector to the board. And I have six wires here. So each one of these must be brought into the board on the DRO and this one wire, so it seems when this is connected, causes a problem. I'll put this together and redo the experiment and I'll connect pin 4 with a little jumpers just to prove that that's, that is the issue. Uh, right now I can't say for sure. Connected it back up and I've connected the A channel I haven't connected the B channel, it's probably not necessary, but I'm going to connect pin 4, which when I look in the Eason manual for the 1 micrometer scale like I have, they call pin 4 another ground. As far as I know, should be okay, but uh, maybe not in this case. We'll see. So I'm going to connect pin 4. We'll see if the problem occurs. I don't see any problem. Uh, maybe I'll connect the B channel. And the B channel is on pin 8. And yes, I do see the problem. Let's remove the A channel, which is on pin 6. Yes, I removed the A channel, and I'm seeing, seeing the resonance. This is the B channel only connected, and I'm seeing this uh, odd oscillation to prove it. I'll disconnect for pin 4, and let's see if that fixes the problem. Yes, it does. With uh, this unknown pin 4, which the manual says is a ground, but actually may be some signal. If I remove that, everything is working okay. So I will have to... I think I will open the connector from the scale and just clip the wire on pin 4, since I don't actually know what that is. Well, actually, maybe I'll put the scope on it and we'll see. Okay, I've put it on pin 4 from the scale, which is the blue trace here, and uh, I only see some spiking, which it would be sort of expected within an unterminated line. Now I will connect the, the scope probe to pin 4, from the DRO and see what's there. Let's see, there's some there's some signal coming out of the pin 4. This is the blue trace represents a signal coming out of the DRO down the line which Eason says is ground. So there's something funny going on here. I don't believe there should be any signals coming out of the DRO but apparently there is and I don't know why that is happening. I looked up in the manual for the uh, YH Sino scale for the DB25 connections, and they say pin 4 is also a ground. However, when I put a scope probe on there, it is a, a signal 
that is looks like it's the same as channel A and that's that's very weird so when I connect it to the uh, the scale it's in essence shorted to ground and that must cause some sort of oscillation and uh, causes the whole process to not work. So here's what I'm going to do on pin 4 which is supposed to be not connected the DRO calls it a ground and the Eason scale calls it a ground but a square wave that is the same as channel A is coming through this and because the Eason scale has it grounded the digital signal is then shorted to ground and that probably causes the electronics in the DRO to to oscillate. Because of that I think I'm going to simply cut pin 4 and I want to make sure that I get the right one. Pin 2 is grounded, pin 1 is not connected, pin 2 is a ground and you can see that that is a shield here. Pin 3 is not connected and pin 4 is this supposedly ground signal from both the Eason scales and from the uh, DRO but the DRO is putting out a signal and that is causing a problem. So I think I'm going to pull this insulation back and I'm going to cut the cut the wire off right there fold that over. I think I'll put some heat shrink tubing on that to make sure but right now I'm going to give it a try on the scale. Well if you hadn't noticed in the, uh, in the previous video I cut the wrong wire. I cut number two instead of number four so I've repaired number two. This is number four and I plugged the cable in and it uh, works properly. So I think I'm going to have to go through on the other one and cut pin 4 as well. So there's a basic incompatibility with the YH Sino DRO and the Eason scales. If the Eason scales hadn't grounded pin 4, which is not listed in the manual as being grounded, or if uh, the YH Sino DRO didn't put out some funny signal on pin 4. It would have been fine. In fact, the manual for the DRO says pin 4 should be grounded. So both of them are grounded. That would be great. But that's not the way it was. So the Eason scales should list in their manual that pin 4 is grounded. And the uh, YH Sino, which does list pin 4 is being grounded, it really should do it. It should not put out a signal on pin 4. There's something funny going on there. So this is the solution to the problem and I really don't know why it was done this way but here you go. I think problem solved and I'll do the other scale this way. I'll cut that pin 4 pin and I think I'll be good to go. Okay, here's the uh, back of my DRO. So I've repaired, well, modified both DRO scales. It works okay now. This is a Y8 Sino, or I don't know how to pronounce that, YH800-4P, and it's a four axes DRO readout. And you might ask why four axes for a lathe, and uh, it wasn't much more expensive. I thought about putting a scale on my tail stock. I don't know. But if not, I thought I would move this over to my, my Bridgeport milling machine. And then I could use the four axes, one for the knee and the, another for the quill. So that ends up being four axes on the Bridgeport. This also has a nice feature where uh, I think this input, you can put a magnetic pulser uh, connected to the spindle and that will give you a uh, RPM readout. And on my, my Monarch, it's got a, uh, a notched wheel for the uh, spindle lock and I could put a, a magnetic pickup on this 
and use it for that purpose too. I might do that. Uh, we'll see. Other than that, I think I'm pretty happy with the, the DRO. Uh, just got it installed. I can see here's the uh, cross light and you can see I can count down to the, the last digit and then on the uh, and the Z can count down to tenths, so that's pretty nice. So I uh, just got it installed. We'll see see how it works in actual usage. But uh, other than this weird thing with the interface, which really made it not work, it was really incompatible, uh, could not be used uh, without that fix. So clipping pin four and the DB9 connector from the scales made this work. Now the the normal uh, thousand scales, I think there are actually five uh, micrometer scales, may not have that ground pin, I don't know. But on these tenth scales, they do. So, uh, so I'm pretty happy with this, and we'll see. Now that I have everything working, I will show show the results. So see, I'm adjusting my uh, x-axis and uh, counting properly. I move my z-axis, and that's counting properly. So I'm pretty happy with the result and. Uh, project completed. Okay, uh, perhaps we'll talk a little bit about how the scales actually work. Inside the scale there'll be a, a glass rod about half an inch wide and the length of the scale and on the rod there will be printed marks just like this, just lines and in the Chinese scales most of them are 20 micrometers between each line. The lines extend along the entire length of the scale. And this is a, like a little blown up section of this. And on the pickup, there will be two photo sensors. And they'll be slightly displaced from one another. So that in this case, the A channel will be a photo sensor looking right at the center of the mark, and then half a division away will be the B sensor, and that will be looking at right at the division, right at the edge of this mark. And as the scale moves back and forth, A and B channel will pick up the marks at a slightly different time. And in that way, they can tell which way the scale is moving. If A detects a mark before B does, then the scale is moving to the right. If B detects a mark before A does, then the scale is moving to the left. And if you want to look at the signal that comes from the scales, it will be something like this. So. The sense as the scale is moving across, say at a constant speed, A will see a square wave like this. When it's down, there's no light coming through. And when it's up, it's detecting light. And it'll just go up and down and up and down as each one of these marks pass by the photosensor. And then the B channel is just the same, although it will be half a wavelength off. So it will get a square wave, but it will be shifted. And if the scale is moving to the right or to the left, the relationship between these two changes. Relate the marks at 20 micrometers per mark to the waveform, it looks like this. Each cycle will be 20 micrometers wide. So the time from when a signal goes up down and up again will be 20 micrometers. And uh, that is how the digital scales work. The electronics, the sensors, will detect each edge and from the this 20 micrometer division you will get four edges. You'll get an edge here, 
an edge here, an edge here, and an edge here. That's four edges, and that will give you five micrometers of movement between each count on your DRO, so that the ordinary resolution of the scales, when you get a five micrometer scale, which is the, the standard resolution, that's how it, uh, it works. It simply reads the waveform, and on each edge will count your DRO up or down depending on the direction. So that will be a five micrometer scale. Well, when you get the one micrometer scales, the scales themselves are probably the same, but you can't get 20 mic or you can't get one micrometer readings on a square wave. So what you have to do is the sensors will output a sine wave, actually two sine waves, the A channel and the B channel will produce a sine wave and it will be shifted by one quarter of a wavelength, just like this up here, but a sine wave. And with this, the uh, a little electronic circuit reads the shape of the sine wave for the A channel and the B channel and multiplies it by 20 and will give that will give you the mic the one micrometer reading. So this is the circuit that is basically in the read head. There's a, a photosensor for the A channel, a photosensor for the B channel. There's a amplifier here, and this also has some adjustments associated with it because this scheme depends on a very accurate sine wave. So there's some potentiometers, which we'll see in a little bit, that will be adjusted in the factory to shape the sine wave to be the best possible. Then it goes into a, a multiplier chip, and that multiplier chip reads the sine wave, and depending on how high each one is, where the actual reading is on the A channel and the B channel, it will determine which of the 20 counts it should output. This amplifier chip is an, actually an LTV 274, and that, that's a op amp chip, and there are adjustments that I don't show here, but those are adjusted. It goes into this uh, GMAC AIP40 chip, whose job it is to read the sine wave and, the, and multiply it by 20 and output a A phase and a B phase. And then that goes to two comparator chips, and that's an LM339. And the output of that goes to, for channel A, goes to pin 6 on the DB9 connector, and pin 8 on the DB9 connector. Obviously, there's power coming in here to make this all work, but this is the functional wiring of the little reed head, and this is the chip that makes this the one micrometer scales different from the five micrometer scales. The five micrometer scales would not have this chip, and that makes them a little bit more expensive. This is a Eason scale. Well, you can see that, but this is what it looks like. This is a, a little board underneath on the bottom side of the board are the chips the three chips. This middle one is this GMAC multiplier chip. There's some capacitors and resistors, but it's a pretty simple circuit. These are all of the adjusters for adjusting the sine wave so that it is as perfect as can possibly be. And this just slides back and forth on the scale like that. This is um, relatively easily replaced. You can take this end cap off. There's four screws that hold it on. The reed head slides out, looks like this. There is a, a slider and there's a, a spring here that holds it in place. There's little ball bearings. It's like a little car and this little car runs on the glass scale and right in there 
is the photodiode read head and on this side will be some LEDs to uh, produce the light that the photosensors detect. So the reading of the scale is done here. There's a little wire that goes up into the body of the unit here. You can see the wires coming up from the bottom and they simply go out the armored cable and that's really how they work. These are these are uh, relatively easily replaced. They are available separately. You do have to get the either the, the reed head for the one micrometer scale, if that's what you want, or the five micrometer scale uh, reed head, and you'll be good to go. So you just slide this back in. You have to be careful to get this car on the glass scale and by looking in the end you can see the the glass scale right there it's it's glued into that track see if you can just see the see the glass there you get the little car to slide in the track on the track with the ball bearings just running along these are the rubber seals that uh, keep uh, any crud out and you make sure you don't uh, mess them up you slide the car back in and you're good to go uh, it is not symmetrical you have to get you can notice the shape of the extrusion the car must be put in in the right direction because the the marks on the scale are only on one side so you you do that and you can put the the cap back on relatively easily and there's just four screws on the end that hold it in place and if you need to replace it you're good to go that's about it for the uh the scales.